Amen. Good morning, sisters and brothers. It is good. It is good for us to gather together. It is good that we're able to still share with each other in the beauty of holiness. I'm very happy to be here, and I trust that as we share together, that indeed God will have spoken to each of our hearts a word that we need in such troublesome times. Turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I begin. God is our refuge and a strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam Though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the, on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. And know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. God, we are grateful. We are grateful for your presence for the assurance that you are with us. We are grateful, O oh God, that you are the God who speaks. So continue to speak to us now, Lord, through your word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Since the recent outbreak of COVID-19 here in Jamaica, I noticed an increase in my email um, from several insurance offers, of several insurance offers, and mainly one bank in particular, keeps sending me some reminders, some promotion about insurance. And insurance companies usually use some tagline that would symbolize to people assurance. Guardian Life, I believe, uses its logo um, as a net or a blanket, however you perceive it. And there are others who use an umbrella suggesting, hey, in times of trouble, we've got you covered. And insurance companies, I believe, know that in times of trouble, in times of turmoil, people are looking for assurance, looking for hope, looking for answers. When, when life is okay and things are going great and we're on the mountain, there's no need for looking for assurance. It is generally when times are hard and times are tough. Psalm 46 is often referred to as a psalm of Zion. Zion, the city of God, which formed an integral part of the identity of the people of God. 
Zion was the holy city and God was in the midst of her. It symbolized and actualized the presence of God. And this was in the form of the temple that was in the middle of the city. The temple was in the city and the temple was the dwelling place of God. This was one of the roots of contention between the Jews and the Samaritans. The Jews worshipped in Jerusalem, however the Samaritans built their temple on Mount Gerizim. Jerusalem for the Jews was the place to worship. It was the dwelling place of God. However, the Samaritans worshipped God on a different mountain. But wherever the people were, whether they were exiled, whether they were faced with some formidable foe, or found themselves in great distress, they would simply look towards the city, the holy city of Jerusalem, Zion, beautiful for situation. And the people would look and they would know and they would remember that God had not abandoned them, that God was still with them, and therefore this was a symbol of their hope. So whenever Israel was in trouble, that is why some of the Psalms we read and we look towards the hills or we turn towards Jerusalem because this was the embodiment of the presence of God. And so the people would always look toward the city. And naturally, in times of crisis, humans look for some glimmer of hope and deliverance. And as I said, insurance companies know this. One of them uses a tagline, life comes at you fast, meaning that life can be unexpected. And adversity can come without warning. And even when there is full warning, there is never seemingly that fully preparedness. We can organize and we can schedule and we can do our best, but life happens. And in the present case, we're dealing with this pandemic and all people are affected by this virus and so much is yet uncertain an uncertainty that not knowing I was reading one article that said that they're still learning about this COVID-19 they're still trying to figure it out so the best minds that there are are still studying and still you know looking under the microscope to see okay what exactly is it that we are dealing with and uncertainty my sisters and brothers will bring fear if we are not careful fear of the unknown fear of the next step and in such times i believe one of the matters that seem to be lifted up is the matter of theodicy how could a good god a wonderful and powerful God allows such things to happen. And in times like these, there are many who conclude, well, logically, since this crisis is happening all over the world, it is rational to say that God does not exist. Yet the fool, the Bible says, in his heart, says that there is no God. In the midst of certain trouble, certain crises and a certain fear. Hear the word of the psalmist to the people of Israel and hear the word of God to us this morning. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. We who say we believe must consider this matter carefully, for it is God who says he is and then we say, well, if God says he is, then how could this be? But in the words of this psalm this morning, I believe, we may find comfort, confidence, and courage. God himself is our certainty, is what the psalmist is saying. God himself is certainty in uncertain times. And this is the first truth, I believe, for us to consider. That in times when the next step does not seem to be clear, in times when even the geniuses and the experts don't know what is coming next, the 
psalmist reminds us, sisters and brothers, God himself is our certainty. Listen to how the psalm begins. God is. Very simply, very unassumingly, the verb here, we understand it to mean a state of being. However, in the original Hebrew text, the verb is or to be is really implied, which I think makes it so much more powerful. From the beginning, the reader's attention is drawn to Elohim. It is a curious way to begin such a psalm that has such powerful imagery. That against this backdrop of chaos and trouble and turmoil, the psalmist declares God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. The absence of this verb in the original Hebrew text makes it, I believe, more potent. Because this is saying to us that it is not what God does, it is rather who God is. God is the embodiment of his own divine nature and characteristics. Hence he declares to Moses and to the people in the wilderness, I am that I am. God does not simply provide refuge. God does not simply provide strength or present help, but God is our refuge and strength. God is our very present help in times of trouble. He himself, brothers and sisters, is our constancy. He is unresting and unchanging. He is faithfulness embodied. Refuge and strength embodied. Ever present help in times of trouble embodied. The psalm is considered, as I said, to be a psalm of Zion, highlighting the city of God. But from the very beginning, the psalmist points to God, beginning with God as the ultimate symbol. Because the symbol can never overshadow the reality to which it points. Zion only points us to God. The temple only points us to God, the true refuge and the true strength. That is why when we fast forward to the New Testament, we see the leaders doing the detestable. The gift had become greater than the altar. The temple had more significance than God who sanctified the temple. But here the psalmist reminds us that certainty is not in the temple, certainty is not found in the city, but certainty is to be found in God. In other words, sisters and brothers here, the psalmist, we may not know what the future holds, we may not know what tomorrow may bring as we continue to listen out for broadcasts and news, we may not know, but this one sure of that God is. And at times when the future seems unclear and there is this anxious waiting, what will come next? What will the news say? How many more cases are there? What is going to happen? How will it affect us and our loved ones? The psalmist assures us God is our unchanging reality. Each day there is some new news. Some bit of information, as Reverend Edwards said, some relief from someone who claims to be reputable and they're sure of the information. I, I got a news that UA was going to close long before UA um, released their official statement. So everybody has an official word. World leaders are having press conferences outlining protocols and steps, but the truth is, sisters and brothers, there is no certainty. Our certainty this morning cannot rely on other people or in information. Our certainty must be in God. I believe it is this sense of uncertainty that is leading to this frantic panic shopping frantic activity that seeks to protect me, myself, and I. It is that uncertainty that leads us now to make decisions that will affect everybody else in a negative way because of that uncertainty. Let me buy up all there is to buy without even thinking of the other person because I am not sure what 
what will happen tomorrow. It is that uncertainty that is leading to that hoarding like the children of Israel in the desert. When God would have instructed them, take only what you need for today. I will provide. But they hoarded the man of sisters and brothers. And what happened? It rotted on them because God said, you must trust me to provide for the next day. They refused to heed the word of God. But there's no need for us to be frantic. There is a debate again whether church should remain open or not. Should we come? Should we not come? Our certainty is not in the building. Our certainty is in God. Our certainty is not in the city. Our certainty is in God. And as we progress, I just want us quickly to look and how attention to God. So God is our certainty, but God is also our security. Here verse 2. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. This underscores that the blessings and provisions did not come from the city, but they came from God whose presence was in the city. Absence of um, the absence of, God, of, of blessings and provision does not mean that God is absent. And for there is nowhere that God is not sisters and brothers. And because of this, the psalmist to say, though the earth may move, God will be our security. So the absence of the blessings and the provision does not mean that there is an absence of God. God is still our security. The promise here is specially enforced because you see the psalmist using the word moved over and over again. The mountains, the kingdoms, the writer is using the imagery that we usually use to represent security and stability. And insecurity will come also in times of trouble. But this insecurity is nothing compared to God. Change is a theme of life, but the psalmist is echoing though the very earth as we know it should change. Though the very fabric of what we see and we know should change, God is our security. He will not allow us to be moved. That is why when the children of Israel were going to war, they could declare, Lord, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. I suppose in this time, it is easy to feel that way as well, that everything as we know it is just shifting all around, and everyone wants to know that they are protected. The truth is, many of us may have already had some type of contact. We don't know some type of exposure, but, and I know you might say, but this might not sound very comforting, Sister Rosa, but even as we take all the precautions in this uncertainty that threatens our security, I believe we can take heart as the psalmist says, God himself is our security. Hear the psalm, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. Can you imagine to see the mountains shaking into the sea? If it's one thing that we have faith in, it's the ground. We walk, we run, we stride, we sit without even a second thought because there's just something about the ground that is just steady and affirming. And here the psalmist pulls that 
from underneath us. Say, even if the ground should move, you will not move because God is with you. We have a saying in Jamaica, if somebody says, but what if him jump? Say, but him not go further than the ground because there's always that security that the ground will be here. But here the psalmist is just shattering that and saying that the earth can be moved. Imagine the earth moving from under your feet. Earlier this year, we had an earthquake and I would have experienced this firsthand as I took precautions under a table and I put my hand on the ground. Now the ground did not seem to be moving, but sisters and brothers, I could feel the vibrations of the earth underneath and it was most frightening because I've never felt anything like that before. The ground just felt as if it was waving under my hand. The mountains, the earth, a symbol of strength and steadfastness. Imagine these toppling into the sea. And this is what makes the words of the psalmist even more audacious. That even though all of this should happen, rest assured, you and I shall not move. What a promise. Many people are looking to other pillars of society for security today. Ministries and agencies and governments and we're seeking security. Yet I ask us who will secure the most vulnerable in our midst? And instead of looking for our own security, do we wonder who is securing those who are most at risk? Those who will pay dearly at such times of crisis. In the midst of crisis and the chaos of nature, which causes the earth to shake and totter, where is our security? It is, the, is it in the well-stocked pantries at home? Is it in the ease of access that we know that we have, that we can move or we can pack up and go? Is it in our position of security? Is it in the wealth of things that we have done or take precautions that we have taken? Are we looking from a protected vantage point or is our security in God who is unshakable, unstoppable, unchanging and unchangeable. God is not the preventer of adversity. He is our security in the midst of adversity, sisters and brothers. So the psalmist says, God is in the midst of her. And finally, not only is God our security, he himself is our life-giving reality. The psalm says, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. The psalmist outlines the abundant and constant provision of a river for Jerusalem. But the image is all the more significant because Jerusalem has no river. There is no such river in the city except a few small streams. And perhaps the psalmist, some will say, is looking in anticipation to a day when a mighty river would, would flow. But since Jerusalem had no great river, and a great river sustains a city, how is the city sustained? Here again is a beautiful contrast. On the one hand, we have the churning, menacing waters, the tumultuous crash of waves that threaten to sweep up all in their path like a tsunami, and then the calm, serene, life-giving waters of God. Somewhere it is written, He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. So listen again. This river flows and makes all the city of God happy, even in the midst of adversity and trouble. Even in the midst of mourning, sisters and brothers, there is gladness. In the midst of uncertainty, there is surety. In the midst of exposure and possible risk, there is still security. And in the midst of barrenness, dryness, and lifelessness, there is water, a life-giving reality. As in the desert wandering, we can fast forward again to the woman at the well. The living water was present to her, even as she went to draw water. The river in biblical times can be a symbol of peace and defense against an enemy attack. Because if an enemy besieged the city, the river meant that there was a guaranteed water supply. And the Hebrew word 
for very present is translated exceeding muchness. So imagine not just a stream, but a river that is flowing in exceeding muchness. God's life-giving water flows from himself, sisters and brothers, and never, never runs out in its exceeding muchness. In times of increasing scarcity, we, scarcity, we won't do well to remember this. Shall we, like the heathens, rage, argue, quarrel with God, frantically grab for what we can get? Shall we complain about our distress and murmur about our discomfort? Should we retreat in fear, flee from this adversity, lock ourselves within our houses or churches, look out for myself, me, myself, and I? Hear how the psalmist ends. Be still and know that I am God. Though this psalm is a psalm of Zion, there is no mention of a king. It is understood that God is king. It is a confident assertion. It is an invitation not to trust in earthly kings, nor to put your trust in earthly security of a place or a location. It is an invitation to trust God whose presence we are forever promised. God's dwelling is not in the temple. It can never be fixed. God does not dwell in a temple made by human hands. If you note the psalm, it has three times that it says Selah, which is usually interpreted pause and reflect. What does that mean? Hear the heart of the matter then. The expected response is that as you become aware that you know the glory and goodness of Elohim, never neglect to just stop. Take note of God's gracious acting and giving in human life. Note the pause, stop and reflect. Stop thinking about yourself. Stop and reflect on God's goodness. Stop worrying, for worrying is not the antivirus to corona. Stop complaining. Are there solutions? Are there anything that we can do? Stop with the logical, rational explanation and the psalmist invites us, trust in God. Stop, for none of this is within our control at the end of the day, sisters and brothers, more than what is in our control. We can do what we can do and only so much and no more. So when we feel that sense of urgency, when we feel that sense of fear, when we feel as if there is no peace but just a raging stop, the life-giving water is here and he, his promises are true. He himself is our certainty. He himself is our security and he himself is our life-giving reality. Let us accept the invitation then to be still and to know that he is God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rosa, for that timely and reassuring message. I'm going to invite us all to stand now for the hymn of response. Number 50 from the Baptist Hymnal, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Please stand. 